Oh no, oh no, oh no! I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. He's overdue. He's in a rabbit stew. Can't even say goodbye. Hello. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. We've got to cut a few production values just to try and keep this episode under an hour. This is episode 114. My name is Mike. This is Eagle and Vice. Let's go. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. Hey, this is Mike. This is Ego and Vice, episode 114. Yep, no time for a monologue today, kids. Uh, I'm trying to keep this thing under an hour. It's kind of my goal, usually. And uh, I had a guest in to Southhood Studio. His name is Sandy Vance. He is from the local band Teenage Fiction. We had a great conversation. Really got into the weeds with uh, a songwriting topic. I had a great time. I hope you enjoy listening to it. But I'm trying to keep it in, a, in, a, in an hour. Because that's my sweet spot. Or I think it is. Anyway, who knows? Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, play a song from Teenage Fiction. It is called Opposite Ways. And then we're going to come back and we're going to have our conversation with Sandy Vance. Stick around. Hey, it's Ego and Vice. Let's this mess we're making 
Hey, welcome back. This is Eagle and Vice. This is episode 114. As promised, in South Hood Studio, I have Sandy from the local band, local Ottawa band, Teenage Fiction. How are you? I'm good. Hi. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm really excited to be here. And I listened to, uh, I know we were just talking about like when you were on a pod, a friend's podcast and, and you started asking him a lot of questions and he started talking about his band. But I wanted to tell you that I listened to the Riptides all the way here and I really enjoyed it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. At least someone's someone's got to enjoy that, right? I was listening to, what was it called? Was it called Group Therapy? It oh, it was one of the EPs then. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It was like all instrumental stuff. I really, really liked it. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's like the uh, the, the surfer stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was really enjoying that. Oh, cool. I'll be listening to more for sure. Oh, good. Yeah, if you, uh, yeah, definitely check out the Riptides because they're like an Ottawa staple like they've been around they're they're a veteran ottawa punk rock band and yeah. uh the advice i always give to any band out there is just don't break up yeah that's it that's that's the that's Keep the number, going that's the number one rule if you're if your singer wants to do a solo project let them go if you guys are in a big terrible fight just take a little hiatus and then sleep on it and get back together because it's way way easier to get back together after a hiatus then put it back together from scratch. Yeah. So it's all good. It's only rock and roll, right? So how are things with you? How is Teenage Fiction? What's going on? Good. Um, yeah, how's things with Teenage Fiction? Teenage Fiction is a, is a, an always evolving entity that, that, uh, um, that is currently uh, evolving uh, uh, as we speak. I'm, uh, um, we're, we're taking a little bit of a break from shows right now. Um, the last one we did was September 14th at Targ with uh, Root Cause and Class of 91. It was a lot of fun. And those those were both great bands. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, just was like, I, I've, I'm... There's, there's like a lot of songs in my life. Mm. Um, I write a lot. That's kind of an understatement because you showed me a folder um, of just stuff in the last little while. And you had... How many songs were in that? I mean, I don't know. I, in that in that folder, there's probably maybe 150 or 200. Okay, that's over like how many a year? That's over four years. Four years. Okay, yeah, so maybe that's that's still a lot because that work would work out to like about 50 a year, maybe. Yeah, that's a lot of songs. I think I think that's a lot of songs. It feels but that way. I'm comparing it to what I do too, and it, I can't, I can't, I can't overwrite. Um, it takes me a long time to sit down and write a song. Yeah. And, uh, I've brought up before how like if I could make money on half songs or quarter songs, I'd be a millionaire, yeah. right? <laughs> Something you start. But one of my tricks is that I I have to play a song for a bit, and I have to comp- like once I find something, yeah, which is rare. Just like, oh, that's kind of cool. I have to stop immediately, record it on my phone or something, and stop sure. immediately and walk away. Because if I beat the shit out of it, I'll never go back to it. Yeah, because I won't finish it in one sitting. Yeah, so, is that what you do? You can just start and no, it's it's a bit different. Um, because I've been writing songs for a really long time, and I am gonna get ba- eventually bring this back to the present day of what's teenage fiction doing. Sure, but I've been writing songs since I was thirteen, so I've been writing songs for like twenty five years or whatever, right? And um, mm-hmm. I've gotten into a place where It started when I was around 17 that I just, I felt like somehow there just were tons of them and they just kept coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was in my, when I was like 21 ish, I went to St. Lawrence College in Kingston and did a music program where, where I learned um, about theory Mm -hmm. and like, and and not, not with the, the depth of like say a, a music BA, but with a good amount of breadth and to be honest, a fairly good amount of depth as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, I kind of, I got really attracted to the composition and the theory stuff because I, I, I felt like my, my instructors were actually giving, kind of giving me like the cheat codes for Ah, songwriting. I see. Right. Yep. Whereas previously I would have to kind of like, I would, I, I didn't really know how come, like, how come I like this chord progression, but I don't like this one. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And how, how come this one sounds good, but this one kind of doesn't. And I was kind of just like, my process would be more like, it was just sort of luck Mm -hmm. if I got, if I got something good, you know what I mean? And then I'd be like, okay, yes, this is good. Let's work on it. Right. But I found that as I started to learn more about music theory, 
and, and I learned it in a really applied way because I was applying it to songwriting as I was learning it, right? Yep. So as I learned more about music theory, I started, I started to have this new process happen where I, if I had an idea, I could kind of plug in what I knew about theory to think about all the kind of different ways that that idea could go, mm-hmm. right? And then I could just try them out and see like, oh, which one do I like? And that was really exciting. And that sort of turned into this thing where... Um, and then at the same time as that's happening, I'm, I'm learning how to hear like what the different chord progressions are. And I can just kind of like, and, and learning how to kind of just pull them out of thin air and not, not having to go to a, a guitar to, to get them, right? So all this stuff is kind of happening and my brain's just always thinking about music. And then somehow it just sort of became the case that like, it just outputs this stuff. And um, sometimes it's not like the best. Sometimes I'm like, eh, you know, that one's not so great. But I always want to document it because for some reason my 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 brain is doing it, right? Does does music theory and like learning how to actually create songs, does that actually make the songs better or does it make it just easier to write more? Yeah, I, I can only sp- really speak for myself. I felt like it was both for me because hmm. um, I feel like... And this, I'm just talking about me, right? I'm not talking about maybe other people or, or anything. This is just my experience, course, right? Sure. But But my experience was that like starting out being completely self-taught basically, except for my father who showed me like the, the what he would call the cowboy chords mm-hmm. on, on guitar, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from there, just learning by watching uh, Nirvana videos and, you know, figuring it out that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm self-taught as well. I've, I've never taken a lesson or anything. Y- so. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so I was just kind of left to my own devices there to develop as I would. And unfortunately for me, I don't have a, a very good natural sense of melody or a natural sense of 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 pitch, mm. right? Okay. And so it took me a long time in my development even to figure out that you needed to sing notes, right? Like I wasn't even really aware of that until I was like 17, mm-hmm. you know, that you're that there's like you're you're aiming for something here, right? I, yeah, I, I thought guess. I thought that you just fucking went for it, you know. <laughs> well, you should, that's okay too though. Yeah. That's okay too. That was my next question is like Without being taught, like I, like I said, I was a self-taught guitar player, so I probably play the guitar in some people's minds, or maybe in a theory type of like education type of way. I probably play the guitar wrong, right? Mm. But I make it work. Is the, can the same thing be said about songwriting? Am I writing songs wrong? But they work. yeah. So I, I I think that so my because I'm both right. Like I'm self-taught and and I have some some education in it, right? Yeah. So I'm I, I can I can kind of talk out of from both perspectives, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, like, th- I think that people who don't know much about music theory can write some of the best music, right? I think about some of my favorite artists, right? I already mentioned Nirvana, right? I don't think that Kurt knew very much music theory. I think that he, I think he knew maybe just a tiny bit more than he let on, but I don't think that he knew very much at all, no. right? And yet somehow he was able to write these really interesting chord progressions with these really interesting melodies on top of them, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Some people have like a natural gift to just kind of... Those songs were very e- like very stripped down. Like there wasn't much to them, but the things that, that were there were the right thing for that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it may have been only three chords, but the way the, the melody sat on top of the, like the chords... The progression, the way the song came together, plus just the just the atmosphere of the song, it all worked. Whether he was doing it right and wrong, I guess is in the ear of the beholder, right? Totally. And you know, I I I think I think you can self I think you can be self taught to play guitar. I think you can just kind of like you said, grip it and rip it for a song, and do your best. Um, I don't think there's a right and wrong or that, but Me neither. I would definitely be open. Like I said, for me, it takes a while to kind of write a song. If there was tricks and tips or something I could learn that would help the progression of that move along, yeah. totally open to it. Yeah, well, that that's so that's the other thing, right, is that I felt like, again, just for me, it stream, kind of streamlined the process because once once I really got got with learning about theory as, as a, uh, just as something I was doing, once I was like, okay, I'm fucking learning this, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, it 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 became something that my little brain just could not stop thinking about, right? And so so all these neural pathways are all are all forming and and connecting with each other all the time, and uh, 
as I said, yeah, for me, it just streamlines the process because I don't, I don't start writing a song theoretically. Mm-hmm. I, do, I just don't like the way that songs start for me is I'll just be chilling, like at the end of the day, watching TV or something. And I'm kind of like mindlessly watching TV. I'm not really paying attention mm-hmm. and I'm just sitting there with my guitar in my hand, sort of like strumming around. Yep. And then when something sounds cool, I go like, oh, what was that? And I'll look at it and go, okay, so that's this. I'm in this key and I'm playing like this chord with that extension or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, okay, so like from there, I can already think of about five or six different ways that I could go, right? Mm -hmm. So let me try them out and see which one works and which one feels right. And so it just makes it like, it takes some of the the guesswork out of it, right? For Mm -hmm. me. And the other thing that it helped me with was melody writing and with understanding harmony, which I just didn't understand before because I don't have a good natural ear. Mm-hmm. I have a I have pretty good pitch now because I've trained it. Yep. But but just just like fresh out of the gate, like just like Sandy on his own devices, like figuring this stuff out, really, really, really poor poorly developed sense of pitch and poorly developed sense of harmony or melody. Hmm. So so learning about music from a theoretical point of view helped me understand like what's a melody sure <laughs> and how sure, do sure, i sure, and, sure. And, and what's a harmony right i um i can't really write like i can um whenever i write songs like i said i know what you mean when you're sitting like in front of the tv and you're, you have your guitar in your lap and you're just kind of almost unconsciously kind of like but um i can't like i can write a guitar riff but it just sounds like a guitar riff to me sure if i'm gonna actually write a song I have to, I have to like phonetically, la, 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 la. Yeah. that's where my hook, not even a hook, but that's where like my melody comes from. Yeah, me Cause, too. Because to me, I'm not a super fancy guitar player. Me neither. <laughs> I don't try to play out of my range either because I know if I ever have to play it live, I'll flub it up and it'll be a disaster. So I try and do stuff that I know I can pull off. Yeah. And I always figured in a band, I'll just get a really good guitar player sure. to do the hard stuff, right? Yeah, but yeah, I just, yeah. I've all, even in my other band, I was always, the, uh, it was a like a three piece. I was the only guitar player. So I kept it really simple, but I have to sing the melody over the top. Yeah. I have to do both at once. I can't separate them. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's sort of the same for me too. Like mostly my music starts with a guitar part mm-hmm. and then I'll just start kind of humming stuff while I'm playing it. Mm-hmm. And, and eventually I'll find a note or I'll find a pitch or I'll find something that I think really works with what's happening Mm -hmm. and then sort of just develop that just kind of almost using my voice as an instrument like sometimes almost kind of yodeling and like just like absolutely you know yeah 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 yeah. just like finding it right yeah and sometimes it's it's that perfect balance that actually makes the makes that tune um I I I've been writing songs my whole life, like as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. And I've never really considered myself a singer songwriter though. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't think I fit into that category. Mm-hmm. I listen to genres of singer songwriters and their songs are just beautiful and wonderful. And my songs, I always, they're just like, they're animal on the drums, but on the guitar, like I'm just banging. <laughs> some out cause I've never been that. I've never, I have no grace at all. Okay. I'm very like, I always considered myself the sloppiest guitar player ever. Like I can hold my own for what I play. Sure. But I can't do cover songs because I feel like I'm just absolutely butchering them, okay. right? So I just kind of write my own thing and I do my own thing. Um, yeah, but it works for me, right? I don't consider myself a singer-songwriter, though. I'm just, I write songs. Yeah. that's I'm a guy that writes songs. I, I think of myself in the same way. Yeah. I don't, I don't really identify as a singer-songwriter, even though I do both those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was just thinking that that I never brought it back to the present uh, tense with all that stuff about songwriting and theory. Uh, no, that's Let's... great though. I love talking about songwriting <laughs> with with another songwriter because I, it, it, it's I could talk about it all day, but people probably don't want to listen to it all day. <laughs> um, so um, yes, please. Yeah, so so what the reason I busted out that demo folder to kind of just give you a sense of the backlog mm-hmm. is that I've got a I've got a ton of songs that I think are pretty good. And I'm having a really hard time getting them recorded and releasing them with all the shows that that we've been doing for the last little while. That's right? why you're taking some time. So yeah, so so I was like, okay, look, like we, I need like we, I think at least a season, right, to to get some of this down and 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 get it get it out. You know what I mean? So that's what we're working on right now. If you have 150 songs, like almost finished, two finished songs, how do you even? Like where does the where does the selection process yeah, start? Yeah, I uh, I I went into the folder about a year ago, mm-hmm. um, 
and and because I'm also still writing currently. Like I have another folder that's filling up. I'd imagine right? it would be, yeah, 150 uh, later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I was just I was feeling really like I was feeling this like discomfort almost just knowing that there was so much stuff that was just sitting there, mm. and here I am still writing, right? So about about a year ago, I went into the folder and was like, okay, I'm gonna listen to all of this. I'm gonna like take the weekend and like listen oh, to man. all of this, and I'm gonna take notes out of like what are the ones that still need work, mm-hmm. and what are the ones that are like good to go. I, all I have to do is write a finished set of lyrics, and then this is a song, mm-hmm. right? And I got about forty ish, or about maybe between forty and fifty out of that sort of listen through. Out of all, you listen to all of it, and that's those uh, ones like you kind of pick. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know if I listened to, I might have just dropped off like two thirds of the way through and been like, fuck <laughs> this. <laughs> this is four years worth. Yeah. Dude, but I'm only one man. <laughs> but I pulled out about, I again, I pulled out about 40 or 50 that are like, these are solid mm-hmm. and, and these are the ones I want to develop. Right. Yeah. So what we're doing right now is working on stuff that's from that m- kind of master list. Yeah. There's, there's about, I've pulled about three or four out of that and we're working on that as well as kind of three or four that are kind of things that I've written since then. Mm -hmm. And we're sort of figuring that that out. Um, And just sort of like, like no rush at all. Like there's no deadline. There's nothing like that. It's just like the, the pace that whatever, however, when I don't even know what we're making, but I'll know when it's done. Yeah. Right. Awesome. That's cool, man. Um, The thought of have even having like it whittled down to 40, um, that just intimidates the hell out of me because you said some of them, like most of them don't even have like lyrics. No. And, and I find that, like I said, I could kind of la 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 to, and find something. Yeah. But if I had 40 songs that were in front of me and said, okay, now we have to write some lyrics for at least half of these. Yeah. That's the hard, the older I've gotten writing yeah. lyrics is the hardest thing for me to grab out of the air anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because when I was a kid, I used to, it didn't matter, right? You were just like, I was mad at my parents or I was mad at my boss and stuff. <laughs> But now, like, I'm older. Like, I'm, what do I... I can't sing about being mad at my... I can, but it's dumb. I've done it already. <laughs> yeah, right? So, <clears throat> I, I'm now I'm I'm that guy who... I'm, like, a donut away from becoming, like, the, the rockabilly guy who, who, who sings country stuff. A donut away. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, you know what I mean? Because now I do more introspective and I tell kind of stories of my life. Sure. And I guess that's a natural kind of evolution of, of somebody. I but, think so, yeah. But... It's so hard not to be schmaltzy or cheesy or go too far. You still want to kind of keep it fresh and fun. Yeah. Not like, I grew up in a small town. You know, I don't know. It's really, really hard. How, what do you, like, what do you, what do you normally write about? Or is it just, yeah. So, um, like, lyrically, I mean. Yeah, I find it challenging too, Mike, honestly. Um, I, that's why so many, that's why they all pretty much, the last thing they need, they're all in there and the, so many of them need lyrics is because I don't love the process of writing lyrics i'm always happy with them and proud of them when i'm done mm-hmm. but i don't like sitting down to do it i find it tedious mm-hmm. um because i'm i'm always trying to like i never want to repeat myself and i never want to use like the same imagery twice i never you know what i mean like i try to be really conscious of that stuff yeah and um and a lot of the time too like just in terms of subject matter like i've gone through a few phases right and for a long time um, I wrote in kind of almost like a, a collage kind of cut and paste sort of way where mm-hmm. like this line might be about one thing, but this, this other one might be about something different mm-hmm. and you kind of, and I would kind of shuffle them and mix and match them until they kind of told a story. Right. But it mm-hmm. usually was very abstract and sort of imagery based. Mm-hmm. And I just like that stuff a lot. But lately I've been, I've been writing, um, just more concretely about, um, just experiences that I've had or, yeah. or things like that. Right. Um, and I try, I've been trying to, to lay off. I, I'll never be, I'll never, I'll never stop doing it completely because it's just in my bone marrow, but I've been trying to lay off like being really abstract and really image based. Yeah. Um, just cause I feel like I've done a lot of that. Sure. Right. Sure. Um, and so I'm trying to find ways to kind of tell stories um, and to, yeah, to be a bit more of a storyteller, mm-hmm. but while still making it like, as you said, like kind of finding some way to make it fresh or having some way that it's not just like, here's what I'm going to tell you about. And here's, here it is. Yeah. And I'm telling you as the listener, almost how to feel right now. Right. I, yes, I understand that completely. Um, 
I just try and I figure like everybody kind of has the same. Everyone kind of goes through the same stuff in one way or another. Yeah, we're all human. It's the human condition. It's the human nature to to you know what I mean. And everyone has a story that oh that happened to me or that happened to me. Sure. So when I write now, if I do tell a story, um, I just try and make it somewhat relatable. Yeah. That's all. Where someone can be like, it's not exactly what my thing is, but I can get I I get that. Yeah. I get that where that's coming from, right? <laughs> I found some information about teenage fiction. It shows you go as far back as 2018. Well, yeah. at least on the releases, it showed uh, Dreamers. Yeah, Dreamers. You released in 2018. Yeah. And you've released 
11 singles or <laughs> smaller projects, I guess EPs or singles, yeah. up until 2023, which is Snow Day and... And Morning Talk. Morning right? Talk. So yeah. I guess there's other people in the band. Yeah. Um, there's So there's been like lineup changes in Teenage Fiction, right? Um, so... Um, Teenage fiction. So when I was in high school, I had like a little solo. I would just record them on my four track, and and then later on my on my computer mm -hmm. with using my four track as an interface. Mm -hmm. And I had a little solo thing called Bad Science Fiction, mm -hmm. and I would record these little demos and give them to my friends and stuff like that. Cool. And then um, I didn't. I di I did music, you know, kind of all through my twenties and stuff like that. And then um, I dropped off around twenty when I was about twenty nine. There was just some stuff going on in my life, and it was kind of all, all overwhelming. And I was in school, and I never did. I never did university as a as a younger person. I did it in my late twenties, mm -hmm. and I just felt like a bit of a shift in my priorities. So I said, okay, like I'm I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have to leave music over there for just a little while. I don't know how long, but like for a while, mm -hmm. right? And, um, about four, three and a half, four years later, I was like, okay, like, cause I kept writing the whole time, mm -hmm. like, and I was like, okay, I've got like a bunch of songs that I think are pretty good. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I decided to record them. I bought a, a used drum set and, and, um, you know, a four channel interface and a few mics and stuff like that. And I just went into my parents' basement and recorded them yep. and that's dreamers. Oh, wow. um, yeah. And I called it teenage fiction, um, as kind of a callback to bad science fiction, which was my teenage project. Nice. Right. So, um, and then I just put it up on Bandcamp. I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't like, there was zero promotion. I didn't do anything with it at all. I just yeah. popped it up on Bandcamp and that was that. Um, I did, I did do a, a re I did get in touch with a buddy of mine who was living at a punk house at the time, mm -hmm. uh, um, at ask a punk. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, hey, man, like I just dropped an EP. I'm not I'm just I'm keeping it super low key. But I'm wondering, like, do you have like a bill like, that I could hop on just as an acoustic opener or something like that? Yeah. And he was like, he was like, hell yeah, man, come on down. So I did that. And that was fun. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like I, I played it. That was good. Uh -huh. You know. Uh -huh. And uh, and I was like, hey, like hmm, that was nice. Um, but I was still doing like from fr I was still doing my internship for my work and my priorities were still elsewhere. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then a, a little while after that, I, I, um, I'm just giving you the story of teenage fiction now, by the way, Mike. I love it. A little, it's awesome. That's, uh, what, that's what we're here to do. A little while after that, just out of curiosity, I Googled Teenage Fiction Ottawa to see what would come up, if anything. Mm -hmm. I was expecting just to see the band camp page. Get a little traction? Yeah. And, and uh -huh. uh, there had been a, an article from Ottawa Life magazine. Wow. That was about dreamers. Oh um, wow! Like a review, not an article. And you didn't like, even know about it. No, I had no oh, clue. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there was a review. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I, I I got reviewed. Okay, so I I don't have I have no clue how they found out about it because I did not promote it. Yeah, that's weird. Um, someone just probably just stumbled across on Bandcamp. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I've I've never and I never contacted them and got the story or anything. But uh, that's so cool. I, it's just like wow. <laughs> you and, know? And, yeah, and they and they gave it like a pretty good review. They they were pretty they were pretty down with it. They they thought one of the songs was a little too noisy, but other than that, they they gave it a really good review. Ah uh, well. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and that was really encouraging. And that, and I was like, okay, wow, like maybe maybe I'm not insane thinking that these songs are good, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then a little while after that, um, at this time, I'm still just kind of finishing up school and just kind of you know, trundling along. Mm -hmm. And um, a few months after that, I got an email from, do you remember Prest, the venue? Uh, oh, Prest? Course. Yeah, so I got an email from Prest um, basically saying like, they emailed me through Bandcamp because I had, that was, there was no public email for Teenage Fiction. There's no Instagram for Teenage Fiction. There's nothing, right? They emailed me through Bandcamp. So someone found you again. Yeah. They it's like, I'm trying not to be found, but you keep finding me. <laughs> <laughs> they emailed me through Bandcamp and they were like, hey, we want you to, we would love to have you down to open for, uh, for a couple of touring acts that are coming through. Oh, that's awesome. And I was like, okay, like, let's do it. Yeah. Um, so it was an acoustic show and, um, that was in February 2019, mm -hmm. um, and uh, acoustic show. A, a, you know, a bunch of my friends and family came. It was really, really fun. Um, I got some some really good feedback from the people that weren't related to me um, about it, and that that's was, always nice too. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really encouraging, right? And again, so I'm feeling really encouraged, right? Yeah. Um, and 
and I was just feeling like, okay, like I could do this acoustic, but like, it's not really an acoustic thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so let's maybe think about bandmates. And so I asked a friend of mine, my friend Sierra to, um, if she'd want to join and she said, yeah, I'll I'll hop in on drums and vocals. Mm -hmm. And so we started jamming and, um, it sounded really good and, and I couldn't really find a, a bass player that sort of vibed that I vibed with. You know what I mean? I was kind of looking and I jammed with a few people, but I couldn't really like it. It just wasn't feeling it. You know, bass bass players are weirdos. <laughs> I, might edit, I might edit that out. but <laughs> um, And so I was like, we were talking and, 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 and previous to this, I'd been in a two piece band, mm. like a pretty heavy two piece band where I use like an octave pedal and stuff. And Guitar it was drum type thing. Yeah. Like do, yeah. Okay. But like, beefy you know mm -hmm. um and i was like you know what i got an octave pedal i got a bass amp like we could just do it this way sure. let's just jam like this for now until we find a bassist yeah. and we jammed like that and it sounded good and i was like do we need to do we want to add a bass player and she was like oh, i think this is working you know yeah it's not the same but it sounds good no it's right? like a lot of a lot of um bands have made a awesome career you look at the white stripes and you look at the black keys sure. you look at um uh, anyway, whatever. Well, I'm even thinking like Death from Above. Oh, yeah, right. Like, that. Okay, well. And I, I think Royal Blood, too. Sure. Right? You could, yes, that's right. And uh -huh. you could make you can make a great career. And you know what I mean? You you don't have the headache of putting up with like a five-piece band yeah. with your horn section. And you know what I mean? It's just like uh, those bands should stay together forever if they're just friends, right? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Well, so we so so me and her start jamming, and we get a, a little batch of songs together, and then we record them, and that was put out as the is called Liminalism, mm -hmm. the EP Liminalism, mm -hmm. um, and then not too long after that, and we played about you know maybe seven or eight gigs after that came out, and things were going pretty well, and and uh, we were meeting meeting other bands in Ottawa and sort of connecting and making friends, and it was really nice, and then mm -hmm. that that um, you know COVID happened, and then um, that slowed things down a good bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, I remember you were saying, you are saying that off mic, uh, before we started where you, um, after COVID you had to kind of like rebuild the band again. And it's such a common story. Like during COVID bands that went into COVID, so many didn't make it out. You know what I mean? Because people's lives just went in different ways. Like I lost a drummer and a bass player. So it's, uh, I don't know, uh, good on you for keeping it going, but that's us because we're the visionary. So was it hard? Um, waking up saying, okay, I guess I better find some people to play with. So that was, that was another transition point for teenage fiction. Um, and, um, at that point, um, James, who's the current drummer in mm -hmm. teenage fiction and, uh, he he's somebody that I knew through his his he ran a house venue the one I had actually played at mm -hmm. called Ask a Punk okay and so that's how I knew him oh um and and my friend Martin who's a really good uh, musician in Ottawa uh, proms under the name Yarns mm -hmm. he was like you sh James uh, you should write him and see if he'll he'll fill in with you because he's a really good drummer mm -hmm. and I said okay. So I wrote him and I was like, hey man, I got like this gig, this gig, this gig, this gig. Mm -hmm. Kind of going through some lineup stuff right now. Would you be, <laughs> inter would you be interested in, in kind of hopping in and, and, and going for it? Yeah. And, and he's like, and he's, he's like, yeah, sure. And him being a drummer in Ottawa, he's like, well, I'm in three other bands, but well, I, could, and, I could find some time for this. He's, he's sort of like, not even sort of, he's like a pro. He's like a session musician and a live musician, oh. right? And so, so he said like, yeah, I'll, I'll, for sure. He liked the songs, I think. And we jammed a couple times and it was feeling really good and really tight. And, Great. and so he hopped on. Um, and then as, as things just kind of progressed and I was going like, you know what? Like I'm actually, I think I'm solid with this guy. I really like him. He's a nice guy. Shout out to you, James. Well, you, you can't really, you can't really, um, frown is at his credentials. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, pro, 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 pro drummer. Wow. No. And so he's like the nicest, chillest dude ever and, cool. and he's he's really really fucking good I'd and imagine, uh yeah. and um and it's just been a pleasure playing with him so i just at a certain point i just was like dude do you want to just keep doing this and he was like if you're cool with the arrangement i'm cool with the arrangement and wow. i said let's go so we do it. and then um and then um i was still missing because james the one thing he did say say was like i'm not gonna sing so don't ask me to sing okay. and i said okay fair enough bro and I was missing the harmonies because in teenage fiction, one of the things that I really w work on a lot and that I'm really proud of is the harmonies, right? Li live har record harmonies are one thing, but live harmonies are lovely. Yeah, right. If you can do them, if you can do them, and yeah. we could do them me yeah. before, right? Um, and I was really missing it, and and I so I was trying to figure out like how can I get 
the harmonies back and I would love it to be like, you know, like a, a, a woman as well doing the harmonies. Mm-hmm. Right. I love, I love to, to, to have that sound and, yeah. I, and I've loved, loved playing with girls in bands for a long time. Fair enough. Um, and, uh, and I knew my friend Kenzie had, I had recorded her band previously. I'd recorded some demos for them, a band called Dark Desire. Okay. And um, and I knew that she was going through a bit of a, a musical kind of transition herself. I, I had sort of heard that through the grapevine. And uh, I got, I just reached out to her and said, you know, you've got an incredible voice. She has a, just such a beautiful voice. I see you, you're a great singer. You're, you're a great guitar player. Like, do you want to, do you want to learn some of my songs and just jam out and see how it feels? And she was down with that. And so we did, and it sounded phenomenal, even just when it was just me and her. Yeah. Yeah. And then when we got with James and played it all together, it was like a huge wall of sound. It was amazing. That's amazing. And it was like, this is the move. This is what we're doing. Um, still no bass player. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that Teenage Fiction is up and running and uh, everything's back moving, do you want to talk a little about your experiences in the current Ottawa music scene? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I can say that it's it's been... It, since the lockdowns, you know, were lifted and everything like that, right? Um, it has really, really, really been uh, a dream come true playing music in the city for me, and at least. Um, um, I feel like a, a lot of good groundwork, just in terms of connections with people, and, um, were, was laid over the course of that time. And then it's like they finally open the doors, and you can all you can all finally get together and just just you know. Um, create these really really special moments with each other um and that's that's how i approach that's sort of my philosophy right is like i'm not i'm not necessarily doing this because i want a lot of recognition or success i i don't think i'll achieve that because i think my music is too too niche Mm -hmm. i'm doing this because i i i find a lot of meaning in the social connection with with people and the creation of of these moments and these memories together right yeah um and uh, so there's been so much of that yeah. in the last year and a half for me that I've just been on cloud nine, right? Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I've been, I've, I've been downtown making music since 2013, so it's 10 years, mm-hmm. and I, I can honestly say I've never seen it this good, right? Mm-hmm. Just in terms of the amount of people who are coming to shows, mm-hmm. right? Like the last few sh- shows that Teenage Fiction did, like, like at the, you know, we had like it wasn't just us right like it's like this is like a, a local bill you know what i mean we're, mm-hmm. we're playing with our friends but like we're like you're you're like this is a local bill and we sold out the rainbow mm-hmm. right like pre-covid that was like we'd get 40 people out. it's hard yeah it's right? crazy man um so it's it's been a dream come true man honestly yeah it's amazing how things happen like that like i've been playing in ottawa since 99 so mm-hmm. i've been i've seen a lot of ups and downs and uh, i don't get out as much as i used to but um i found like in the mid 2000s 2003 to 2009 was a big boom period. oh really i wasn't here at that time yeah that was a really really big period for for local music ever it was like that group where everyone was just everybody knew everybody and everyone went and saw everybody and everyone was kind of had that one goal and then through the teens i don't know i guess i guess it was there but i know what you mean like prior pandemic where it was just like pulling teeth trying to get people out to shows and stuff yeah, yeah. and i I try not to talk about the pandemic too much because everyone has the same We've kind of stories <laughs> and everyone did the same thing. So we won't, we try not to dwell on it. There's so many more interesting things that came before it and, and I, after I it. I agree. That um, somewhere along the line, though, everyone maybe in their minds just realized, wow, I really miss uh, live music or I really miss just being out. I really miss just doing that. Even if it's not like a direct thing, it's like all I want to do is go out and do stuff it's just like yeah. now that you can it's like wow this is great and i think everyone had the same goal of getting back out there and now it's all just coming together in a in an awesome scene and there's so many creative i've always said that that's why i do this podcast because i know that there's awesome uh, musicians and artists and talent out there and interesting people and crazy stories and i've seen it through for through two decades in this town right yeah, yeah. and i'm so happy that the ottawa music scene 
however long it lasts, hopefully for hopefully forever is strong right now. Sure, yeah. With the people that I've had on the podcast just recently, like the guys from Neon Ghost House, Love the, them. the new hires, Love them. yourself. <laughs> you guys are making it way too easy for me. Seriously. For an old punk rocker who loves the Ottawa music scene after 25 years, it's it's so reassuring to know that there's life and love and um, energy and people out there that care about it as much as I do. So thank you for that. Um, what is the Ottawa Gatineau compilation? Yeah, that's uh, something that I've 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 been involved with um, with my friend Andrew, who plays in a couple of bands uh, in Ottawa. One is called Great Hunter, mm-hmm. and they're incredible. I saw them last night. Uh, and then the other one he's in right now is called Cellar, and they're kind of, Great Hunter is like a sort of like a dreamscape kind of like like symphonic almost pop indie pop sort of project is really good and seller is like hardcore punk oh. <laughs> and, um, and uh so so uh, he and i um uh, spent a lot of time together over the lockdowns because we were both runners mm. and so that was one of the activities you could do right right and we would just go on these long runs and kind of chat and and get to know each other and and um eventually it just kind of came up somehow i can't i honestly can't remember how but we just started talking about like the idea of putting out compilations kind of like the ones that you could get you know back in the 90s mm-hmm. where it was like this song you can only get on this compilation mm-hmm. right um so and then we said okay like that's a good idea and i think andrew was like we should do like a we should make it also a fundraising thing mm-hmm. right and and like just pick different kind of services around the city every every time we do this and 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 fundraise for them and i said yeah of course great um so that's what that is and we've done so we've done two volumes um hopefully we can get another one out this year i'd love to um it's just like you know it man you got you gotta you can only do so much right but um yeah there's only so many hours in the day how do you release it how do people like listen to what volume one and two that yeah on bandcamp oh, band you, you can go to ot i think it's ot dot comp and um and check them out and um so they're all they're all artists from ottawa and gatineau and these are all just like exclusive tracks that you cannot listen to on spotify you can't get anywhere oh, wow that's kind of neat yeah and i and i recorded a few of them myself um and uh, yeah, the, we the first one we did for the food bank, and the second one we did for the like Ottawa Rape Crisis Center, mm-hmm. and then um, we we haven't honestly talked too much about a third one. I know there will be a third one at some point, but it just ha- we, it's not on. I don't think know if it's on the radar right now. Cool man, and that's that's what that is. Forty songs. When it comes down to actually recording them, do you do it all yourself? Uh, sort of. Yeah. Um, the way it's working right now, because James is a uh, like uh, like a session musician, right? That's one of the things he he does in his career. Mm-hmm. He's sort of has like a permanent recording setup of his drums in his basement, and yep. it's a it's a nice treated room and everything, right? And he's got like fifteen or sixteen mics on them, and and it's, awesome. it's good. It's a good setup. So the way it works right now is when I've when I've sort of completed a song, um, I'll record like a just a version of it to a metronome that has just the guitar and the vocals mm-hmm. and maybe the bass as well if I've gotten that far, and then I'll send it to him, mm-hmm. right? And he'll and we'll have like just a little back and forth about sort of like what's the vibe we're going for here and like kind of what are we what are we what are we doing? Yeah. And then he'll usually send me like a rough little recording of like his part just to be like, is this the vibe mm-hmm. and. Pretty much every time I've said yes, that's the vibe. Well, I guess so. it's probably pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. yeah, yeah. And uh, and then I'll start building up from that. And then at a certain point, uh, Kenzie and I will get together and do like her vocals, or if we're going to do some guitar as well, we'll do that. Mm-hmm. And just sort of like piece by piece by piece. Um, and then I'm I'm the I'm usually the one who mixes it. And and that's been I think a bit of a detriment to teenage fiction in the past because I've been learning mixing as I've been releasing things. Right. Um, Does it? gradually get better the more you yeah the more the more releases i do the better i get it's the only way you can do it though right yeah um and um so that's that's how it goes and and i think that but recently i've been recording a lot more because i've been doing some eps for some other bands like Mm -hmm. for a band called root cause i'm working on right now and they're awesome and you should have them on here another band called jj park i learn i've been learning a lot that way too Mm -hmm. right and so i feel like the recording the mixing and the recording and the tracking and the production side of things for the next teenage fiction thing Mm -hmm. it's not going to be like one iterative step above the last one which is what has been like before Mm -hmm. it'll be like several iterative steps good yeah and i 
think and with anything uh, like imagine the more you do stuff the better you get at it who yeah, knew yeah. who knew right and <laughs> so we know that you're taking some time off for um the recording of the song so you're yeah. not going to be doing too much live stuff not for now do you have a do you have an idea of when you'd like to see the record come out or the releases come yeah, out? Yeah, so I, I you know, I want to get I want there's some stuff that's getting close enough to finished that I, I would like people to hear it just cuz I'm proud of it and I, and I think people would like it. Mm-hmm. Um so I'd like to have maybe have a single out before the end of the year. Um in terms of having what like as I said earlier, I'm not even really sure what it is we're working on. Like mm-hmm. I don't but I'll know when it's done. Um, I would, in my mind, I would like to have it done like sort of spring, mm. sort of like April, May, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but, but truly I don't have a deadline on it. I'm just kind of uh, one foot in front of the other and just kind of like <laughs> poking away. Yeah. It's not yeah. like anyone's really like forcing you to get something done at a, at a certain time. It's just like you release it when it's ready. And yeah. Then, you know, sometimes that's the way, best way to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's how I'm feeling about this. Yeah, and you always want it to be kind of a labor of love and fun. You don't want to put a too hard of a deadline on yourself because then it just gets kind of stressful. And that's the thing, right? Is like it's like you know, life's already hard enough. It totally is. You <laughs> and, know? And, uh, this is the fun part. This is the part that's supposed to be fun, right? And, Definitely. And uh, that's that's my attitude right now about this project for sure. Cool. Um. So, do you have any uh, quick shout outs before we wrap things up? Honestly, at this point, we'd be doing an entire other podcast of me just <laughs> nodding to people and saying hello. Okay. I'll start. I'll, I'll just start and uh, I'll stop at a certain time, but I'll but I'll go with the knowledge of like, no matter what I say, I'll be leaving out like dozens of people who I really love and, and, and admire. Um, okay. So, I mean, the first shout outs that, that seem that feel important are to my bandmates uh, who can't be here today, which are James and Kenzie, who are James and Kenzie, I should say. Um, they're, they're really beautiful, talented people. And I'm, I'm really happy that they're in my life. And so that's my first one. Maybe you'll get Um, a bass player one day. Maybe I will. (laughs) Um, And, um, everybody, the entire music scene, right? That's who I want to shout out. Well, well, that's a great, that's a great start. And obviously you can't get them all, but it's nice to just off the top of your head. It's an amazing, talented scene. And you're a really nice guy, and I'm uh, thanks. really looking forward to stuff that you have coming up. And maybe you and the whole band can come back and kind of do this again once the record drops. Yeah, that would be really fun. And you might even have a bass player by that time. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Sandy, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Mike. And good luck with everything, and yeah. we'll talk real soon. Yeah, thanks, man.
Hello, that has been episode 114 of Ego and Vice. Thank you so much for Sandy from Teenage Fiction uh, coming out. I had a great uh, time. It was a great conversation. Very, very nice guy. Very interesting guy. Um, talented dude. And he fits in well to the Ottawa music scene because it's full of interesting, nice, talented people. There you go. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can always reach me at egoandvice at gmail.com. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can go anywhere. Uh, podcasts are streamed. I'm everywhere. Just uh, Google Ego and Vice podcast. I'm the only one. Trademark. Um, other than that, stay safe. Be good. And um, don't let them get you down. Right on. See you next time. Bye. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker.